In this example, we will solve the inverse kinematics for an RRP standard preferred manipulator. If we're given the end effector position, x, y, z, along with the link lengths, L1 and L2, we need to find the joint angles and distances, theta1, theta2, and d3. So first, let's assign some numbers to this. We'll say that x, y, z equals 0 0.15, 0 0.15, 0 0.18. And then that'll be meters. L1 equals 0 0.1 meters. L2 equals 0 0.2 meters. The procedure for this, we'll need to draw this in a couple different views. One to be the side view with each of the joints stretched out a little bit, and then one to be the top view because this robot goes in three dimensions, so we need to be able to see all three dimensions, which ways the variables are acting. So procedure. Step one is draw top and side views. Then once we've drawn the top and side views, we can figure out how the different variables are affected. And we'll see that theta one comes from the XY plane. And then for step three, we can get L2 and D3 from the front plane. So let's draw that out. Okay, from side view here, then we go up. Then we get to joint two, and then we want to draw this a little bit bent so we can see the angle here, theta two. Stretch out to the point. So here, this distance is D3, this is L2, this is L1. So this direction is the Z direction, and this direction would be somewhere in the XY plane. So here's the side profile view. You would also call it front plane, whatever. It doesn't really matter as long as top is one of the directions that you can see inside is the other direction. So then from the top view, from a bird's eye view, it's going to look like this. We'll have joint one. We're looking down at it. Then joint two will look like that. And then the arm will come out. Here. So this is X. This is Y. Now, this angle here is theta one. And we know this point is x, y, z, x, y, z. But these distances that we see here are not necessarily going to be L2 and D3 because they're reflected, in, like this is just sort of the shadow that you would see. This, is this distance. So that is actually gonna be L2 plus D3 times cosine of theta two, but we don't need that to solve for theta one. So to get theta one, we can just use the Y and the X. If we put numbers in there, that is just gonna be 0 0.15 or 0 0.15 equals 45 degrees equals pi over four. Now to get theta two, things get a little bit more complicated. 
So let's call this distance here R. So this is R. Now this distance, we'll call that S. So if we want to get theta 2, we can use inverse tangent of S and R. Now S is going to be Z, which is this height, minus L1, which is this height. If we plug numbers in here, we have 0.18 minus 0.1 equals 0.8. And then R, we know that that is going to be related to X and Y. So this distance is Y. This distance is X. R squared equals X squared plus Y squared. 0 0.212 equals R. So then that is 75 degrees. Now, finally, we have to get D3. Well, from looking at this, we can use Pythagorean theorem here. So you know that this distance, L2 plus D3 squared, has to equal S squared plus R squared. So if we square root both sides, L2 plus D3 equals square root of S squared plus R squared. D3 equals square root of S squared plus R squared minus L2. So if we plug numbers into there, square root of 0.8 squared plus 0.212 squared minus L2, which is 0 0.2. So when you do this calculation, make sure that the L2 is still out of the square root. And then you get D3 equals 0 0.628 meters. So the key to solving these inverse kinematics problems is be able to visualize side view and top view from the three-dimensional image. And that way, when you break it into side and top view, it's a lot easier to see how the variables affect the motion and then which dimensions you can use to solve for which of the joint angles and distances.